In the previous mini lecture about diagonalization of a matrix, we saw that when A is diagonalized, each matrix product represents an eigenvalue eigenvector problem. In other words, recall we had P inverse AP is equal to cap lambda, which was the diagonal matrix made up of the eigenvalues of A along the diagonal. And we saw that P was a matrix made up of vectors uh, V1, V2, through Vn, where each vector here is a vector, uh, an eigenvector of the matrix A. We can write down that we have P inverse AP equals cap lambda, so we can write down uh, a times P is equal to P times cap lambda. And when we go ahead and multiply out P with cap lambda, we see that this is just going to be the product of each one of these columns with each uh, element in the diagonal here, the scalar. And what we end up with for, say, the ith, ith term in this product is we end up with matrix A minus cap, uh, sorry, lambda sub i times an identity matrix times V sub i is equal to zero. So <clears throat> we saw that this is the eigenvector eigenvalue problem that we're used to look, solving and looking at. And the question is, well, what do these eigenvalues and eigenvectors represent for an ODE system? Well, we can take a look at this. Uh, or take, we can look into this question by looking at an example. Let's say we had a simple system where we had x dot was equal to 2x, and in that case, this is a scalar differential equation. The state matrix A is just 2. So the question here would be, how can we represent this as an eigenvalue eigenvector problem? Well, using the same idea that we did be, uh, before with a, a non-scalar equation, we would look for the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And we would look to find the matrix of eigenvectors that diagonalizes A. Well, A is already diagonal, and therefore P is just equal to V1. The first eigenvector is just equal to 1. And cap lambda is just equal to 2, so is equal to A. And we can see that P inverse is equal to 1. And so we identify that P times P inverse AP is equal to cap lambda. So, which, oh, sorry, this is equal to lambda 1 there as well. So we also notice that the solution to this differential equation is just e to the 2t times the initial condition, x evaluated at t naught, which is just equal to e to the lambda 1t times x evaluated at t naught, the initial condition. So let's say I had something a little more complicated. Let's say I had x1 dot is equal to 2x1, and x2 dot is equal to uh, x2. So I have a an uncoupled or decoupled set of differential equations. We can write down that x1 of t is equal to e to the 2t x evaluated at t naught and x2 of t is equal to e to the t times x evaluated at t naught. We can go ahead and write down all this in state form, saying x of t would be the matrix e to the 2t, 0, 0, e to the t, times the initial, condi initial conditions, x1 evaluated at t naught, x2 evaluated at t naught. And we can go ahead and recognize that this is the, the initial condition state vector. And this would be our matrix exponential, or e to the at. And so what we see is that the solution, and this, this is a very simple case, but this works out for a uh, couple uh, sets of differential equations. The solution for x of t is just a linear combination of exponentials raised to the eigenvalues of the state matrix a. And here, uh, just to, for, to, to uh, write it down, the state matrix here would be just 2, 0, 0, 1. So our notion of stability about starting close, staying close, 
All right, we have stability, is start close, and then stay close. We would want that if some initial condition down here uh, were, you know, some finite value. This is just a, I could take the, um, each of these one, each of these initial conditions are just a number. And then these are going to be functions that either grow or decay or remain constant with time. Uh, they're just exponentials. So in the case where, uh, let's say we had x1 dot was equal to minus x1 and x2 dot is equal to minus x2, then we see that a is equal to minus 2, 0, 0, minus 1. And the eigenvalues of a are just along the diagonal. And therefore, the eigenvalues are minus 2 and minus 1. And our solution in this case, then, is x of t is equal to e to the minus 2t, 0, 0, e to the minus t times the initial condition. So again, the question is, are these exponentials growing or are they decaying? Because the solution is just a linear combination of these exponentials raised to the eigenvalues. So it seems pretty clear that there's a relationship between the eigenvalues of A and the stability of the uh, linear time invariance system. So what is, what is the relationship? So the way we can go about trying to look at <clears throat> this issue of stability is to first look at the solution in general to these LTI systems. So there's our, nor our homogeneous solution. And what I want to do is take the norm of the state vector, and it's the solution to the differential equation. This is the homogeneous solution. And the norm here represents a length. And I can easily plot this in, in say, x1 versus x2 as an example. And if I had more dimensions, I'd just need you know three, four, five, whatever dimensions, if I had all the state vectors. And I would say, OK, well, there's a point. And let's call that point x0. That's the initial condition, say. And I could draw a line, which is just a vector, and the length of that vector is just going to be the norm of x0. And then we know that this system, say, once you let go of it, if it was a mass on a spring with damping, that it would want to tend to spiral in towards the origin in some way. And what I could do is look at the length of this trajectory, or the length from the origin to any point in this trajectory, say there's, we're right there, and call that uh, uh, x of t. And I could look at the length out to that, and that would be a norm out there. And if that norm goes to 0, as t goes to infinity, then we would say this system is stable around the equilibrium point, uh, which is the origin of the state space. Um, so how can I go about that? Well, we know that the best way to calculate a norm as far as we're concerned is to use the Euclidean norm or the 2 norm, because it tells us about uh, length or distance. And so that would just be the square root of the sum of the squares of the elements of the state vector. And so that's easy enough. The question is now, what we've got is the norm of x of t is equal to the norm of e to the at times x naught, which is less than or equal to the norm of e to the at times the norm of x naught. Well, that's just a distance. This is just a constant. So constant distance, whatever our initial condition is. But this is a matrix whose norm is varying with time. So how do you calculate the norm of a matrix? Well, we're going to look at that in class. But it turns out to be related to the singular values of the, the matrix. So it turns out <clears throat> that we can write down the following. We're going to first use that e to the at we found was p times e to the cat lambda t p inverse. So I could say the norm of e to the at would be equal to the norm of p e to the cat lambda t p inverse, which is less than or equal to the norm of p times the norm of e to the at, sorry, cat lambda t, times the norm of p inverse. Well, the norm of p times the norm of p inverse is just the condition number of p. So p 
times norm of P inverse is equal to K naught, which we'll call the condition number of P. And we're going to see more about this in class. And the norm of E to the cap lambda T is equal to the uh, max uh, singular value of the matrix E to the cap lambda T. And we're going to see how this works out in class. But it turns out this is going to be equal to E to the lambda naught T, where lambda naught is the max of the real parts of the eigenvalues of A. So what we end up with is that if we take the norm of the solution of the homogeneous differential equation up here, it's going to be less than or equal to the condition number times e to the sigma naught, I'm sorry, e to the lambda naught t times <clears throat> the uh, length of the initial condition vector. So I have a constant times some other constant. And by the way, condition numbers are always one or greater, right? Times this exponential function. So if lambda is, I have essentially this norm, if I were to plot it versus time, I have three possible cases. One is that it grows exponentially, so that would be lambda is positive. It stays at a constant, which means that lambda is equal to zero. Or this function decays away, which means that lambda naught is less than zero. So by our notion of stability, starting close, staying close, this is going away from the origin, which is our equilibrium point. This is staying a fixed distance away from the origin, uh, which is the equilibrium point. And this is going uh, towards the equilibrium point at an exponential rate. So in our notation, we would say this is unstable. We would say this is marginally stable. And this case down here is stable. And in fact, it's exponentially stable but we just, we're calling that stable. So the eigenvalues of the state matrix tell us about the stability of the uh, homogeneous solution uh, because, the, because, because the, state, the solution to the homogeneous differential equation is simply a linear combination of exponentials raised to the power of the eigenvalues of the state matrix A. And we can see this explicitly when we look at the diagonalization example uh, of a LTI system.